Manufacturers distribute diphenylmethane diisocyanate, commonly called MDI, in a variety of packages, including tank containers, also referred to as isotainers. In this section, we will discuss the recommended procedures for unloading diphenylmethane diisocyanate from tank containers. This will include preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading procedures, personal protective equipment, connecting procedures, transfer operations, disconnecting procedures, and preparation for return. The receiving, handling, and shipment of MDI require compliance with federal, state, and local regulations concerning hazardous materials. Make sure you know these regulations and follow them at all times. It is recommended that a comprehensive checklist be developed and followed throughout the unloading sequence. Let's begin by assisting the driver in positioning the tank container at the unloading station. Make sure that the driver has set the emergency brake once the truck is in position. Wheel chock should be placed under the tires of the trailer chassis, as well as the rear tires of the tractor to prevent movement in either direction. As an added precaution, you may wish to put barricades or warning lights around the unloading area. All paperwork should be checked for accuracy. Verify the purchase order number, that the material being received is MDI, and that the way ticket shows the quantity being delivered. Review the values on the certificate of analysis to ensure that the product meets required specifications. Once all paperwork is verified, the tank container itself must be checked. Check the tank container to make sure the numbers on the security seals match the seal numbers shown on the paperwork. Also confirm that the seals are not broken and have not been tampered with in any manner. Then cut the seals. Next, verify that the pad pressure and temperature are within the required parameters. If they are not, contact the shipper for further instruction. Check the hazard placards. Make sure that they are correct for the product noted on the shipping documents. The U.S. Department of Transportation, DOT, regulates the transportation of 4,4-prime diphenylmethane diisocyanate as a hazardous substance in single packages in quantities greater than 5,000 pounds. When in this quantity, MDI is classified as NA3082, Other Regulated Substances, Liquid, NOS, Class 9, Packing Group 3. The letters RQ will be entered either before or after the description of the shipment when individual packages being transported contain more than the reportable quantity of MDI. The storage and handling of MDI at your facility may be subject to other federal, state, and local regulations. Once the paperwork and tank container checks are complete, the next step is to check your own equipment. If the content of the tank container is to be offloaded into a receiving tank, make sure that the tank is the correct one for the product and that there is enough room in the tank to hold the shipment. The unloading connection on the receiving line should be clearly identified. The unloading operator should show the driver the location of the nearest eyewash station and safety shower. The driver should show the operator where the container's remote emergency shutoff is located. It's recommended that unloading hoses be two inch in diameter. They should also be color coded and are labeled to assist in eliminating transfer errors. Because MDI reacts with moisture, it's extremely important that the hoses are dry. If there is any possibility of a problem with a hose, set the hose aside, tag it, and get another hose to complete the transfer. All these checks may seem unnecessary because the operation is routine, but taking these precautions every time will prevent product contamination and a potential overflow. Tank containers are usually unloaded with nitrogen or dry air pressure. An alternative method would be offloading using a pump while adding nitrogen or dry air to maintain a dry atmosphere inside the tank container. When unloading with either of these methods, 
It is recommended that all discharge vapors be absorbed or scrubbed free of MDI. A closed loop vapor exchange system using a product pump is another means for unloading MDI. Closed loop means that no vapors escape from the system into the atmosphere and no moisture from the atmosphere enters the system. If dry air is used for unloading, it is extremely important to check for signs of moisture. Dry air is recommended to have a dew point of minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit as a minimum. In order to avoid contact or exposure to MDI, personal protective equipment must be worn during transfer operations. This includes appropriate impervious clothing, such as a chemical protective suit, chemical splash goggles, and chemical resistant gloves and boots. Both the unloading operator and the truck driver should be wearing personal protective equipment. The driver will make connections to the tank container and operate the tank container valves and all other tank container equipment. The unloading operator should take responsibility for connecting the unloading hose to the receiving line and operating the valves in the receiving system. Begin the connection process by checking the nitrogen or dry air source. Make sure the gauge is working properly and that the hose is attached securely. Remove the dust cap from the nitrogen inlet on the tank container and install the required adapter. Check the hose gasket for splits or cracks that could prevent a good seal. Connect the nitrogen or dry air supply hose to the nitrogen inlet on the tank container. Before connecting the product discharge hose, inspect the fitting on the receiving line. It should be free of any moisture, dust, or grease. If it is a female fitting, Inspect the gasket for splits or cracks that could cause a leak or spill. Replace the gasket if necessary, and make sure you dispose of the old one properly. Inspect the unloading hose and make sure the quick disconnect fittings and gaskets are in good working order so that the connection will be secure. If everything is okay with the hoses, gaskets, and fittings, connect the hose to the receiving line and secure it. The next step is to connect the unloading hose to the tank container. Remove the closure cap or blank flange from the product discharge outlet and install any adapter if required. Now, attach the unloading hose to the product discharge outlet and secure it. After all connections have been properly secured and the checklist completed, sign the driver's paperwork indicating a good hookup has been made. Now the transfer operation may begin. Open the nitrogen inlet valve on the tank container, and then open the valve on the nitrogen or dry air source. Introduce nitrogen gas or dry air into the top of the tank container up to about 5 PSIG. Next, open the tank container's internal valve and then carefully open the external valve. Then open the receiving line valve. The product should now be flowing through the unloading line. Once you have verified there are no leaks in the system, the nitrogen or dry air pressure will need to be increased to an acceptable pressure, usually between 10 to 20 PSIG, depending on the desired rate of unloading. The pressure should remain constant within the tank container until unloading is complete. Do not exceed the working pressure of the tank container. Refer to the tank container's nameplate for the rated pressure if you are not sure. During the unloading process, operators should stay in the area to monitor the transfer of product. The U.S. Department of Transportation, DOT, requires that a qualified person attend the unloading operation. Attend means that the person in attendance is alert, has an unobstructed view of the unloading operation, and stays within 25 feet during the entire process. According to DOT, to be qualified, the person in attendance must understand the potential hazards of MDI, know the procedures to follow in an emergency, and have the authority and means to move the tank container. In addition, other safety precautions should be followed.
no smoking or use of other tobacco products, no eating, and no drinking should be permitted during the transfer process. The amount of product being transferred should be monitored at all times. This can be accomplished using an inline flow meter, by watching the tank container weight if there is a truck scale at the unloading station, or by monitoring the level rise in the storage tank. For safety reasons, it is strongly recommended that two methods of level measurement be used. Don't rely on automatic shutoff systems to stop the unloading process. Such systems are not foolproof. There is absolutely no substitute for an attentive operator. Monitor the operation to assure that the pad of nitrogen or dry air is maintained in the tank container. Once the tank container has been emptied, it must be disconnected from the system with the same care as it was connected. First, close the nitrogen or dry air inlet valve on the tank container and shut off the nitrogen or dry air source. Then close the internal valve on the tank container. Wait about a minute, then open the internal valve to blow the hose clear to the storage tank. Be careful not to overpressurize the receiving tank during the hose clearing operation. After the hose is cleared, close the internal valve on the tank container and the valve on the receiving line. Then open the bleed valve to depressurize the unloading hose. Make sure you collect any excess product in a catch container that contains a neutralizing solution. Now close the bleed valve and the external valve on the tank container. Once this has been completed, the unloading hose should be carefully disconnected from the tank container and the receiving line. A catch container should be used under the ends of the hose to capture any product drippage. The ends of the hose should be capped and plugged immediately after disconnection. Remove any required adapter. Then apply the closure cap to the tank container's discharge outlet and the closure cap or plug to the fitting on the receiving line. Recheck to see that the tank container is still pressurized with 5 to 10 PSIG of nitrogen or dry air. This will assure that moisture will not enter the tank container and react with the residual MDI on the return trip. Finally, depressurize and carefully disconnect the dry air or nitrogen hose from the tank container's inlet valve. Remove the adapter and replace the dust cap. Sign the delivery report and note any unusual problems or delays that might have occurred. After removing the barricades and wheel chocks, the tank container can be released. In this section, we have discussed the recommended procedures for safely unloading diphenylmethane diisocyanate from tank containers, including preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading procedures, personal protective equipment, connecting procedures, transfer operations, disconnecting procedures, and preparation for return. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader or contact the product manufacturer. For more information on the topics covered in this section, consult the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry. Equipment Guidelines for Diisocyanate Storage Tanks, PMDI User Guidelines for Protective Clothing Selection, MDI Transportation Guidelines, Working with MDI and Polymeric MDI, What You Should Know.